Hello and welcome to another episode of Crushing Comics. I'm your host, Peter, and we are here to fall in love with my comic book collection all over again. I have here a very unusually shaped comic package, and that kind of tells me what it is already, uh, and it is in a lot of plastic. So I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to actually start talking about the actual topic before we get in, because in this case, because of the shape, I know what it is. So, I'm a major, major music fan. My music collection uh, is about as ridiculous as my comic book collection. I'm somebody who still collects music. I, streaming is not good enough for me. I need to know that I'm going to still be able to hear it in a tunnel or on an airplane. And I love artists that, much in the way of comic books, have long runs. I love artists that establish mythology and have an evolution in their career. So I love David Bowie. I love the Beatles. But I really love the female voice in artists. And one of my favorite artists is Tori Amos. As you can see, we even wore a purple shirt that says Tori. I got into Tori Amos not when she originally came out, not as Why Can't Tori Read, or not in Little Earthquakes, although I do remember the songs from Little Earthquakes as they were like playing on VH1 at the time as videos. I didn't get into her in Under the Pink. I kind of sort of got into Boys for Pele because I really loved her single Caudalite Sneeze, but I remember listening to it in the mall on headphones, like when you could like actually listen to CDs that were up in the changer on the wall and just being like, this is weird. So I didn't get that. I came to Tori on From the Choir Girl Hotel, which is actually in just a couple of months going to celebrate its 20th anniversary, which oh my gosh, makes me old. And uh, from then on, I am an immense fan of hers. I own every single song that she has ever created. And I'm talking about her right now because this book is called Comic Book Tattoo. And it is stories that are inspired by the songs of Tori Amos. Now, Tori Amos is an unusual singer-songwriter in that she draws from a deep well of references and actually has mythology in her songs. You can kind of follow the evolution of certain characters and certain threads that she repeats from some songs uh, repeated. Like, so she has one song called Ode to the Banana King that mentions Lucy, and then I think Lucy is again in a uh, pretty good year. She has themes, you know, of little earthquakes. You know, Me and a Gun famously is a song, an acapella song, about her abduction and rape. And later she makes light of that in a song called Tallulah, where she says, you know, I had my rape hat on, but I always could accessorize. Talking about her ability to like shift out of that and not always sing about being the victim. And so with that dense thematic material, you know, from the Choir Girl Hotel, which is originally supposed to be an album about vampires and Dracula and bloodletting, and actually wound up being about Tori Amos's miscarriage, which ultimately is kind of connected. And that is my favorite of her albums, not just because of the one I came in on, but because I really love that kind of like rocked up studio production on that album. Again, I also love American Doll Posse in 2006 or 2007, an album that was effectively a glam rock album, so definitely hewing to my love of David Bowie, but where, again, in terms of story, Tori Amos played four different characters who were four different singers. So Comic Book Tattoo takes a number of Tori Amos's songs um, in 50 stories, and they all originate here. This was not originally released as floppies. And listen to some of these names. Introduction by Neil Gaiman, Stories and Art by Jock, David Mack, uh, who else will you know? Kelly Sue DeConnick, C.B. Sibaluski, Mark Buckingham, Jonathan Hickman, Hope Larkson, uh, Pia Guerra, Ted McKeever, Colleen Duran, and many more. So the way that this book works is that the stories are like four-ish long. Here's a very famous Tori Amos song, Leather, that I performed with my very good friend, Lindsay. So here's the title page, and it has the lyrics. And then, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven issues long. Or seven pages long. And there are some risque things in it. We happen to open right up to leather. But there's also some very sweet, sentimental things in it. And it's really fun to see some of these creators let loose. So here is, this is really great, A Thousand Oceans, which is a song from Trey Amos's 1999 album To Venus and Back, that is written and illustrated by Jonathan Hickman. 
and look at these circle motifs. We know these well from his Fenter's work, but we don't usually get to see him illustrate anymore because he only illustrated on his first few image books. And if you read the story, it actually like works almost in universe to a lot of his other stories, including his Marvel stuff. Uh, and it's kind of fascinating to see how he's been playing with the same concepts. So when I knew that this was a thing and I was back into comic collecting, I clearly needed to have it. And it's really fascinating. It's a fun book that I love to just pick up and read one song from one story to see how different people experience the different songs differently than I have. I have, you know, my own memories associated with hearing them for the first time and my own images and ways of interpreting the stories. And I'm, I mean, I'm obsessed with Tori Amos in that I have all of her sheet music too. I really love playing her music and I actually learned how to read sheet music from the piano book of From the Choir Girl Hotel because I was so intent that I was going to arrange these songs for guitar and I didn't know how to read sheet music to arrange the riffs and I called my friend Sarah on the phone and I made her teach me how to read sheet music over the phone because it was the summer and uh, and I didn't get a chance to see her at school so that I could figure out how to read from the book. So she occupies a major part of my personal mythology and I love her mythology and this book is beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful hardcover book. Um, and such an unusual size and shape, and in this really nice slipcase to protect it because it's got one of those soft touch covers. So, do I think you should care about this book if you don't care about Tori Amos? I don't know. I think that it's really cool to see so many creators let loose in a format like this, and it's quite an all-star cast, but I don't know if they're really going to have the same resonance for you if you're just like reading the lyrics and then seeing the book, as opposed to if you've like heard the songs and know the songs. Do I think you should get into Tori Amos? That's a loaded question, because she has changed so much over the course of her career, and I kind of have to know your taste in music to know what part of Tori Amos to recommend to you. You know, do you want to hear the girl at the piano? Do you want to hear her as the rocker? Or do you want to hear her as she's kind of telling her own narrative, densely mythological tale, as she does on an album like Scarlet's Walk, where she's telling kind of the history of America as she travels around? So. No better match of an artist to comic books, I don't think, other than Tori. And, uh, of course, she notably has been connected to Neil Gaiman for years and years because she's referenced him in songs on almost all of her albums, starting with In Tear in Your Hand on Little Earthquakes, uh, when she says Neil be hanging out with the Dream King, an obvious reference to Sandman. So, now for the ceremonial shelving of this marvelous book. It is called Comic Book Tattoo, because that is a line from one of her songs, The Flying Dutchman. I don't know how it's gonna fit onto the shelf, honestly. We're, we're just gonna put it somewhere down here. Usually, I would have all the Tori Amos sheet music like right here at the bottom of the shelf, but it's actually, this is like how much I constantly play her. I finally have a piano set up upstairs in this house. And uh, the first thing I did was unpack the Tori Amos sheet music and bring it up to the piano. So that's why it's not handy for me right now. Thanks so much for tuning in and hearing me talk about my intersection of my love of music and comic books. If you like hearing me talk about music or if you want recommendations for your own Tori Amos mixtape, uh, talk to me in the comments below because I love making Tori Amos mixtapes for people. And tune in again next time for more crushing comics. There are still many more bundles to unpack, although none quite so unusual as that one. Thanks so much for watching. Wow.